Hi everyone, Jeff Marion here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Let's say you've been injured in a crash and you're a passenger in an Uber, in a Lyft, in a rideshare type of vehicle. What are your rights when it comes to recovering damages for your lost wages, for your medical bills, and for your pain? I'll tell you about that in this video. This is a series of videos designed to help you understand personal injury law. I do videos that help people that are injured in motor vehicle crashes, like this video. I also help people who are injured by unsafe products, like in this video. So make sure that you subscribe to this channel, click on the bell to get notifications when new videos come out, and check back regularly for new content. I've been fighting for people who've been injured in crashes, in falls, and by unsafe products for over 25 years. I created this channel to help keep you informed and help keep you safe. What we'll talk about today is the situation where you're riding in an Uber, in a Lyft, or another rideshare vehicle, and a crash occurs and you're injured. What rights do you have? How do you recover? Some of that, of course, depends on how the crash occurred. If the Uber driver is at fault, that's who you would obviously be pursuing for compensation. There may be a situation where the other driver is partially at fault or completely at fault. Then you would be at the mercy of that driver's policy. But what happens if the Uber driver is found to be at fault? Can I sue? Well, the key difference, for example, is if you are in your own car versus if you are a passenger in the rideshare vehicle is that little mandatory arbitration clause that you breezed through and scrolled up and checked the box that you agreed to the terms when you installed the app in the first place. So this is a common practice with most businesses, especially uh, those that are tech companies and that put apps on your phone or sell you products on your phone or whatever. Uh, even your bank has these. When you get a credit card, opening the envelope and activating the card, you agree to a mandatory arbitration clause. That arbitration is what they're going to enforce. That means that if you go to court and you sue the driver and you sue Uber, they will make a motion to have the case heard in arbitration. That arbitration is one that they control. They select the arbiter, they select the venue, and that is a situation where you may not be able to pursue your case in court and you're at the mercy of a corporate sponsored or a corporate run arbitration. One of the major things that you give up in one of these cases with arbitration, especially in a rideshare situation, is full discovery. And what I mean by discovery is the exchange of information. Ultimately, let's call it show us your cards. So you don't get to, for example, depose the other driver. That is, have your lawyer sit down with a court reporter and take down a statement from the other driver as to what happened or from the driver of your vehicle. You don't get the opportunity to ask the rideshare company for documents about the data, about the car, whether it was going too fast or the driver's history or anything along those lines. When you get to an arbitration and the arbitrator is hired, the arbitrator says, okay, I just want from each side, I want you to give me your case and your documents you intend to present at the hearing within 45 days of today's date. And that's it. You don't get to turn around and ask the rideshare company for documents that might be helpful to prove your case. You have to go with what you have, probably the police report and your medical bills and your wage statements. The other thing that is you have an arbitrator, obviously, you don't have your case before a full jury of your peers and an opportunity to be heard. Probably it's going to be half a day, maybe a full day. You'll give your statement in the morning. They'll give their statement in the afternoon or you'll give your statement in the first hour. They'll give theirs in the second hour and then it's over. And then the decision you get is binding and not appealable to a court. Obviously, if you get a decision that's unfavorable to you in a court of law, you can appeal that decision to a higher court. You don't have that right. This arbitration is binding. This is it unless 
the arbitrator did something absolutely outrageous or engaged in some kind of egregious conduct, it's going to be almost impossible to overturn that arbitration. So knowing all this about mandatory arbitration clauses, how do you feel about them? Should they be illegal? Tell me what you think in the comments section below. I check these comments on the regular and I'm always happy to have your feedback. There is momentum to end these mandatory arbitration clauses. I think the general public is starting to realize that these clauses aren't particularly fair. So there hasn't been anything that's been outlawed at a state level or a federal level for the most part. However, a bill was recently signed into a law that may get some momentum going to end mandatory arbitration. Recently at the federal level, a bill was signed into law that precludes mandatory arbitration when there is sexual harassment or sexual misconduct. So in that situation, you may, depending on the text of the law, it just got signed. I've not seen a copy as we filmed this for you today. You may, if you are in a situation where a driver has sexually harassed or sexually assaulted you, be able to pursue your remedy in court. But it's unclear at the moment, and again, you may still be subject to mandatory arbitration clauses that currently exist. So what's the takeaway here? Well, if you are injured in a crash where you're a passenger in an Uber, you likely can't get a day in court. And the reason for that is because of the mandatory arbitration clause that any rideshare company has in its terms and conditions. That means that even if you sue and you go to court, the judge is going to require you to go to arbitration. That arbitration is going to be limited in terms of how much information you can get from the driver and from the rideshare company. It's going to be an arbitration panel or an individual arbitrator as opposed to a jury. And that decision is binding on you. You're not going to be able to appeal it in court unless something egregious has happened. So you do forfeit quite a number of rights the minute that you step into that rideshare vehicle. If you've been injured in a crash involving an Uber, a Lyft, or other rideshare, please contact me at the email address below or at my website, www.jeffmarionlaw.com. I'll sit down with you for free and go over your case with you and see if I can help. I want to thank you for taking time to watch this video. If you found it helpful, make sure that you click on the like button, share it with your friends in your social media network, and subscribe to the channel. New videos come out regularly, and I'll see you in the next video.